Hi there, I'm Phil from Pico Kim. We're going to look at making a cabriole leg using a spire. In particular, we're doing a new job here and we're going to use a rotary and the length of 500, diameter of 170 to start. Hopefully we'll get that a bit smaller. Um, we've got uh, cylinder surface, cylinder axis. I'm going to choose cylinder surface for this. And um, yeah, it does mean that you've got to have it centered for it to know. It can be a little bit awkward, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so um, so what we're going to do is uh, along the y-axis because we have a long uh, 2.4 meter rotary unit on our surface CNC ATC, and um, uh, we're going to use standard. So um, <laughs> we'll click OK, and we'll get into it. So how do we do this? We load up an STL file. So Aspire. 9.5 means that when we go to model, we can choose a component 3D model, and it's going to wrap this around. So we choose chair leg, STL, and this was just downloaded from Thingiverse, but you might want to get a more accurate one, because this one's a little bit like a 3D scan model of a non-precise one. Okay, so um, the axis is really weird in this STL file. You'd think they'd have it standing up in the STL file, but they don't. So you can choose, you know, all of these, but in the end, it's not going to align. We're going to try and get this aligned as much as possible with that axis, but it's a bit fidgety. So uh, we'll see how we go. Um, I'm going to choose the Z over here. We're going to look at the Z. It's actually fairly straight. And the Z, I'm not too worried about that at all at the moment. We'll go to X and we'll see it's not. So... To rotate in the X, we have to go interactive rotation. We click X, and we should just be able to click and drag that. Okay, so, um, yeah, we're going to put it like one central. Yeah, we'll try that. Okay, and that's telling us, oh, we've got a model diameter of 134. That's actually pretty good. So um, you can muck around with that as much as your heart desires, but um, that's not even giving us a straight on view. I'm not really happy about that. You'll see it's rotating. I'm just going to leave it there at the moment. And yeah. Okay. One thing to have a look at here is that axis has gone like model goes through it's not going to record any of this data that goes through the axis but um it's a compromise like if you want to start with a larger model like i would have to move this up towards the edge of that red one which is going to make it like 150 diameter or something like that it's going to be really bulky piece and it's going to take twice as long to cut out so um whereas this will leave like a weird sort of a shape in here but I can fix that up in like two minutes on a bobbin sander and make it look pretty nice okay so I'm not worried there's not much detail in that and uh, it'll like it'll record most of the outside it'll actually be pretty easy I would think to pick that curve so um, I'm gonna leave it like that and see how we go so uh, there we go um, Yep, that's the diameter, that's the length, millimetres, a resize material block, resize material block, oh maybe we can do that, let's go resize material block, and we'll click OK, hey, it's made it the same size, that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, so if we actually go back to our drawing, we can check out what size it made it by clicking on this job dimensions and origins, and you will see, oh look, it's made it. Diameter 134. Let's just make that normal. Um, and I'm going to make it a bit longer, okay, because we want to have a bit sticking out on these. We actually want to machine underneath and above a little bit, but we'll have a, like a stalk on each end. So let's make the stalk like six millimeters for our roughing tool. So we'll make it eight millimeters. Should be enough, although it's on a bit of an angle. Let's make it 10 millimeters extra at each end. So we've got 443. We're going to add on 20, make it 463. 465 is a round number. Okay, and we'll click on OK. 
So, um, so that's given us our 3D model. We're almost there, but we want to put a stalk on each end so that it doesn't fall out before it does its finishing. Um, so let's have a look at the 2D view and it's going to show us an unwrapped and it's got this big, dirty, big hole in here. This is where it doesn't have that data. OK, it's not going to record that. We're going to end up having to sand that bit ourselves. That's cool. And what it's done is it's put that uh, a bit too close to this end, which is a bit of a pain. So if we uh, select that component, then we can move it upwards. Here we go. Move this one back down. Just a couple of vector lines that we have. I'm going to delete them, see what it does. Mm. Okay, so um, what we need to do to put the stalks in, we're going to go to drawing and we're going to draw a rectangle from that corner and we're going to come down as far as we need to, that we're clearing that material and we're going to do the same on this end from that corner over and um, it can go up into that material. That's fine. Okay, so uh, control A, we'll select both of those or we can click close. OK, we've got those selected and now we go to our modeling tab and we're going to choose our um, this one to make create a shape. We call it a component. I would call it extrude. We're going to extrude that surface. OK, um, and we're going to make it about 10 mil. Now, I, I haven't worked out whether this makes it 10 mil thick, which would be 10 mil radius or what it actually does, but I'm thinking it's 10 mil radius. It'll be a 20 millimeter stalk, diameter stalk at each end of this. So, uh, and when we combine it, we're going to have to choose this one here. I haven't really worked those out, but that's the one I use and it seems to work well. Apply and we click close. And um, so we're in the drawing. Let's go back to the 3D view. You'll see we've got a bit of a stalk at each end. Looks a bit short compared to the other one. So let's go back to that 2D view. Have a look. It looks like it should work. Oh yeah, this curve comes down a little bit too far. So let's just move it up. I wonder what the resolution of that is. We'll move it up. Zoom in a bit and see if we can just move it down a little bit. There we go. Down a little bit. Up a little bit. Down a little bit. And that should be better. So if we do that and then we'll go back to our 3D view, that will have updated. So we've got a bit more of a stalk down there, a bit less of a stalk up there. We've still got this bit here that I'm going to polish off with a bobbin sander. But that is the modelling done in Aspire. And of course, we all know Aspire is great at generating tool paths. So we just click on that button to bring up our tool paths and um, our set. I oh, know we don't need to look at that. That's fine. We're going to do contours and rough and cut with a six millimeter. That's already set to tool one, model boundary, that's fine. Z level, raster X, that's fine. We could change it to raster Y, let's see. Y would be turning about the Y axis and raster X would be moving along and indexing, moving along. Indexing. See, the X would look better. <laughs> we'll leave it at Y. That's fine. Okay, and um, ramp plungers. No, we're not doing that. Okay, calculate. That was quick. Okay, so uh, we're not going to animate just yet, but um, we are going to do a finishing pass. And um, we're going to use model boundary again. The tool is a ball nose, three millimeter, and it's tool number two. We'll calculate. Now it's calculating, even though it's wrapped up, it's calculating as though it's flat. And you'll see that as we um, do the preview. I'll actually unwrap it so that it previews nicely. Um, otherwise it just unwraps itself and it will look square on. And then you won't see how good the preview is because it's square on. So I don't know why it defaults to that, but um, it doesn't need to. So this is the button up here in Aspire 9.5, which toggles your wrapping, or you can go to view, 
and we've got this auto wrapping view we can turn that off and that will put it out flat i'll get rid of my tool paths for the moment and i'm going to change to a isometric looking view let's um just more okay so preview all tool parts and we'll have a look at what that does and it gets down nice and deep in that hole in the center okay so that hole in the center is just going to be like around part of the tube all right it's going to look a bit strange but like i said the bobbin sander will take care of it so uh, let's go back to our view toggle wrapping on and off there it is tool paths are done so we'll select the tool paths close and we'll output using this one save tool paths we're going to use our surf cnc atc and save the tool paths and this is the third time i've done it this one i'm optimizing for material because i've just got that 135 diameter so i can use the smallest amount of material uh, to start with and in fact i could probably get away with a square so um I'll show you that let's have a look so if i get rid of the tool paths we can see our object there if i go back to our this one here see this fits in a square like this so uh so if i actually just get a square block i should be able to get like uh 110 okay so we'll see how that goes in the next video thanks for watching